Yeah, we're not <laughs> dealing with early 2000s Cage anymore. This is this is completely. We're dealing with 2020s Cage, and yeah. he's and he's delivering so far. Even though I wasn't a fan of Willy's Wonderland, still he's delivering. Willy's Wonderland is on Hulu, so people can watch that now. Yeah. If you want. It's 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 worth watching once. Yeah, a least. lot of people have been talking to me about that. Like, have you seen this Nicholas Cage movie? He's fighting puppets. Like, I guess you guys don't listen to my podcast. <laughs> Welcome to History of Popcorn, ladies and gentlemen, your secret. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> we got to do that. More enthusiasm, Elijah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. All right. Welcome to History of Popcorn. <laughs> we we are your hosts. That's the one. I'm Elijah. I'm Justin Trainwreck. And Justin Trainwreck. And we are your hosts. Is that the movie Trainwreck? Or... It looks like I the actually. Font. It does kind look like, like the but, font. But it doesn't have like anything else. <laughs> yeah, it, d- it does look like the font, but also it's the same font for this Kyle Gass band named Trainwreck. So I really don't know. <laughs> for people That's that funny. hate that hate Amy Schumer, I just say no. It's or LeBron. Kyle Gass band. Just kidding. Or LeBron. <laughs> I just like mentioning but if LeBron people, as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, but some people have... have uh, so the first time I went to an, an AA meeting, I wore the shirt. I didn't even like put the, <laughs> put the two together and I got so much shit for it. That's funny. Yeah. Just wearing a sign. Yeah, literally wearing a sign. Have you seen what do you what, what trailers right. have you seen, Justin? <laughs> you saw a pig one, right? You saw uh, pig. Um, yeah, I saw pig. There were others too. I can't remember. There's pig. Oh, the shrink next door, the Will Ferrell. Oh, oh I right. just watched that last night. That was really good. It looks really good, I think. I'm starting to listen to the podcast that's based off of. Oh, really? And it's pretty scary. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. yeah they, no, it's I, pretty I, demented. It's marketing is pretty vague. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. I was debating on listening to the podcast because I was like, so like intrigued in the mystery of the trailer. But then mm. I was like, I got to, I got to do it. And it was like when I, uh, when I watched the trailer for God Girl. I was like, fuck, dude, I'm just going to read the book. I don't care. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, it's I'm pretty interesting. For it. I've never seen, dude, Will, I, like, it looks like a mixture. It looks like a, I don't know what it looks like. It's super serious Will Ferrell, I feel like, kind of. It's what we need. He tried doing it with Downhill, and it, that went downhill. <laughs> that was a, a remake of a European film, right? Or what is it? Yeah, France, uh, Force, Swedish Force du Jour. Yeah. Yeah, which wow. was which was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, the uh, Downhill was not that. It was very disappointing. But, um, yeah, the last like, movie that he's done where it was like pretty serious was Everything Must Go. And he was, oh, that was he a was while really, ago, yeah. Yeah, he was really good in that, though. Uh, he shocked a lot of people with that movie because he was just so calm. You never heard him screaming that. Like, even in Stranger Than Fiction. <laughs> yeah. Stranger Than Fiction, he was really good, but, you know, he screams just, and he does his, like, always kind of a joke, yeah. But yeah. everything must go. He's, like, an alcoholic, <laughs> and it's not funny. <laughs> it's really sad. But, yeah, no, what did you think one. about What did you think about uh, Nicolas Cage's pig? Oh my god, it looks amazing. I mean, like, it look, I mean, <laughs> the story is stupid as hell. Like, it's really, really <laughs> stupid. But it's done in a certain way where it's like so genuine. <clears throat> yeah, it's really believable. But, uh, <laughs> dude, he looks great in it though. Like, mm-hmm. you know what would be really funny is if this is the movie that gets him another Oscar. <laughs> that would be really weird. <laughs> I mean, like, when they're, he they're was marketing it that uh, way. When he was delivering some of the lines, it didn't even sound like him. It didn't sound like him. It didn't look like him, really. Yeah, like it doesn't it, look like him. It, it's like a completely different side of Nicolas Cage that I'm actually really excited for. And I had no idea that Alex Wolf was going to be in it, too. Yeah. I I first heard about this like when I was in uh, San Francisco, I think. what How long ago is that? Two years ago? One year ago? Anyway, I was like, he did a podcast, and he like was talking about this dream role that he did. And he's like, I can't really talk about it too much. Nicolas but- Cage? No, no, not oh, Alex, Alex Wolf. Wolf. And he's like, I'm doing a movie with uh, Nicolas Cage. And I'm like, <gasps> is this the one I think he And he started explaining it because I would see it on his I, I saw it was on his IMDb for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. um, Nicolas Cage's. And I'm like, that sounds bizarre. A truffle hunter. And so I was very excited when he was talking about it and how how great the experience was. But he didn't give any details about the movie. I'm like, talk about more of the movie. And he's just like, it was awesome. I can't believe I get to work with Nicolas Cage. And now I see it. 
and I'm excited about it. The, when you showed me, shows. when you uh, sent me the poster, mm-hmm. I got really excited because I thought it was weight of unbearable talent. Oh, and oh. then I saw it was pig and I was like, what the fuck is pig? <laughs> and I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, you know what? Never mind. That that looks that looks really good. I it's just love be, yeah. like Nicolas Cage clearly like he should be producing his movies more more often because even mm-hmm. with Willie's Wonderland, like you and I weren't a big fan of it, but it's <laughs> it's just a perfect movie for him, though. Like he, se- yeah. he seems like that he knows what the people want, but he still wants mm-hmm. to like act and take the craft seriously. But he still, yeah, he still wants, wants to, to learn something from it, but he also wants to please the audience. So. Yeah. Dude, no, this is this is great. Like, I love I love the route that he's going on. And I just mm-hmm. love that he doesn't give a flying fuck anymore, too. Yeah. Like, he just does not. You can tell that he does not give a shit. Did you hear about the, um, the Seth Rogen, Nicolas Cage story that he was supposed to be in uh, the Green Hornet? I think so. Something about it. I might have heard something about it. Yeah, he. Uh, so they had like one meeting. They, they the studio, yeah, the studio wanted Nicolas Cage, and they had one meeting with Seth Rogen, and uh, he he wanted to do a Jamaican accent, and that's when oh they were like, yeah uh, no, and then he I guess he like he bursted into it, and they were like no, and then he just left, and Seth Rogen talks talked about it like because he did this book, and this is like the reason why I'm bringing it up is because Nicolas Cage has commented on it. And the only thing he said was, uh, I love Seth Rogen and I love his new book. And it's just like, you, you can just tell he <laughs> does not take himself, he doesn't take himself too seriously anymore. Like he's probably yeah. like, so he's like in such like a weird Nicholas Cage then, if, mm-hmm. that, if that, that's even possible where he's just, he's totally fine with making fun of himself and he's yeah. totally fine with like still working with like cool directors and doing cool stuff while yeah, he, having it be completely out outlandish and out of left field. Yeah. He's I love very aware of himself. It's very cool. Like not in a pretentious way, but in like, it's, it's not fine. at all. I'm, I'm aware of it. Like, it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not dealing with early two thousands cage anymore. This is, this is completely, we're dealing with 2020s cage and yeah. he's, and he's delivering so far, even though I wasn't a fan of Willie's Wonderland still he's delivering. Willie's Wonderland is on Hulu. So people can watch that now. Yeah. If they want it's 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 worth watching once yeah a least. lot of people have been talking to me about that like you seen this nicholas cage movie he's fighting puppets I'm like i guess you guys don't listen to my podcast <laughs> <laughs> just offended speaking of will ferrell he is doing this movie that he's adapting called the one hundred year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared and i read this Dude, book that's been in development it is, forever. yeah it, i read the book like a long time ago and i found out he was going to be in it and i thought it'd be made by now because this was when I was in film school. I'm like, I want to see this. And then I thought it would be out by now, but it's still not. But he's going to play a hundred year old man. And the book is so goofy. It's so good. He literally just comes in contact with the funniest people. Yeah. Have you seen the the, the, the movie that they did? The the foreign film? I don't think so. Based on that book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, oh, no, wow. it's hysterical. It's 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 I didn't even know it was based on a book. Honestly, I thought it was just a foreign film. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see. 2013. And they wow. released a sequel too, like a hundred one year old man who fell out of a window or some shit like that. Oh wow! The yeah, the one hundred one year old. Wow. Okay, so I do have yeah. something to watch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I had awesome. no idea that I had no idea it was a book. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's been in development hell for a little bit. That was a movie that I randomly stumbled upon, and I was so happy. All right, let's get into the news, Justin. Let's see what do sticks it. out to you. Let's do um. It. Greg Matola, does that name ring a bell to you? Love him. Adventureland, super yeah, Adventureland. bad. I like Adventureland so much. Like oh, I like yeah. that a lot. Oh yeah, That's one of my favorite movies. Oh yeah. He also directed uh, episodes of uh, that little Dickie show, Dave. Oh yeah, I think he directed the pilot, didn't he? Yeah, so he directed a few. Everything is kind of like set the t- he set the tone of the whole show. Yeah. Yeah, he's making another film. It's a reboot of the series Fletch with the Ch- the Chevy Chase movies. So the, I found out this interesting because Fletch is based off a series of books that I did not know. I did not know that. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 books, which is insane, I think. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's based, uh, originally based on the novel from, uh, what year was it? 19... 19- no, I don't know the year it started, but it was by Gregory McDonald and Chevy Chase played the character of Fletch in two films yep. in 1985 and 1989. But 
I guess the sequel that he did wasn't based on any books. And I think that's why they didn't make another one. And that's why it sucked hard. <laughs> I, I haven't seen these films. And I, oh, I just whistled with my teeth. Great. <laughs> that was that sounded weird. I'd never whistled with my teeth before. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. This is, so they were supposed to make a Fletch three, which was going to be based on the book called Fletch one, which is the first novel that was ever really or that take. It's like a prequel because they hop all over between future and past. Mm-hmm. And it was, I guess, Kevin Smith was going to be attached to direct it around that time. And he he had actors like, obviously, Jason Lee or Ben Affleck to do it. But then Dogma ben came out. Ben Affleck. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But oh, Dog- that would have been weird. But then, that been then, weird. then Dogma came out and they said, never mind. We don't want you to do this. So <laughs> then it got put on the shelf. And in 2011, it was supposed to come out again. The, they're based on Fletch One. Um. Oh, I get it. It's called Fletch One, W O N, but it's yeah. actually it's a prequel of yeah. Fletch One. Wow, I didn't. Get, okay, I just words. made that connection. Play on in tw- words. <laughs> and then in 2014, it was supposed to come up, come out with Jason Sudeikis attached. But that's what I remembered. Yeah, that's what I, I, yeah. I actually was pretty excited to have Jason Sudeikis do it. But now it's not him. Yeah, now it is John Hamm of Mad Men, Baby Driver, Keeping Up with yeah. the Joneses, which Greg Matola directed, I believe. Right. Yeah, in that movie, I couldn't even finish. That yeah, that was like a that was like a higher I, that seemed like a good idea because of the ensemble cast, but I liked all the characters involved with Zach Galifianakis, Isla Fisher. It seemed like everyone was so bored making love. Yeah, it didn't utilize anyone. It's like they all try to do what they were known for. Like they, Zach Galifianakis mm-hmm. gets flustered. He screams mm-hmm. at people, and I, I, I don't know. I didn't like it. Oh, speaking of Isla Fisher, I saw Wedding Crashes for the first time last week, ever. And I was I saw really that. surprised. I was like, Bro, oh, my God. Did. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know why I never. I mean, I came out when I was pretty young and I guess I wasn't allowed to watch it, obviously. But yeah, I was I liked that's, it. That's a lot. It made me laugh a lot. <laughs> I I love Owen Wilson. It made me miss Owen Wilson on the big, oh, big yeah. screen. Oh, yeah. No, he's that's that's a perfect role for him. Uh, <laughs> I'm reading here. Did you know that Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs, was uh he he first replaced Kevin Smith to write and direct this Fletch movie, oh, and wow. he wanted our favorite Zach Braff to play him. That uh, would have sucked. That would have been <laughs> weird. Sucked. Wow, that would have been I worse than Ben that. Affleck. That's weird. Also, they wanted either Brad Pitt or Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> they're on the same spectrum <laughs> yeah no that that is so that is the weirdest group of people to play flutch J, we have jason lee ben affleck brad pitt jimmy fallon zach braff jace sudeikis and john ham that is now the john weirdest Hamm. group of people <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, yeah i, I how, do, how do you feel about john ham because i'm i'm hit or miss with him honestly. i haven't been impressed with him at all yeah he's i haven't either yeah, no, he seems he seems like a funny, funny, fun dude. He just seems like one of those guys that, like, of course you want to hang out with him, but he hasn't yeah. done anything that that, yeah. like, pretty much all the stuff that he's done besides uh, bridesmaids and baby driver has been mm. really, really either super bland. He was in bridesmaids. Oh yeah, he was yeah, the, yeah. He played, guy. He played the yeah. Fuck boy. Okay, yeah, that's he, pretty. Yeah, he, that was like he played the first. poster child for all fuck boys. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, also, he uh, remember that movie tag that he did with yeah, Ed Helms yeah. and Jake Johnson. Yeah, like yeah. movies like that. It's like he's just so bland. Like, yeah, you can tell that he has charisma, but like he, there's something about about him where he he just feels off in certain movies, you know. Yeah. And this movie, when I heard it was Jay Sudeikis, the new Fletch film, like that seemed like it would be like perfect because Jay Sudeikis and Chevy Chase they have the same kind of sensibilities, but Jay Sudeikis is his own thing. Mm-hmm. that he does it's a little bit better and, and a little more modern yeah have but you seen john ham is like you know oh yeah oh yeah i love the first one the first what? one is, is chevy chase is probably his best role oh uh, wow that's yeah. not, uh, clark griswold okay i've never seen the movies i i i was trying to like narrow down what the actual fletch series is about how would you describe fletch the character then is he kind of bumbly like chevy no. chasey that's what no, I thought it would he, be. So that's what that's what ended up being in the sequel. But the first one, no, he's he's just a reporter. He's he's a smart ass, and he, um, he gets approached by a bit this billionaire who's who's claiming that he's dying of cancer. Yeah. To uh, ha- he's hiring Fletch to kill him, 
Mm-hmm. And Fletch gives him like a fake name and all this shit. And like, and then he just starts investigating on it. And his main shtick is that he is the master of disguise. So he like always right, has these crazy disguises. And yeah, and he's just really smart. Like that's the thing, is that he's like super, super intelligent. And yeah. he's not, it's not like he's not falling down or doing any stupid things. Like there's some, some occurrences like that because Chevy Chase can't help himself, but <laughs> that's more sh- Fletch lives. And like you said, that wasn't, that wasn't even based off of a book. That was just yeah. them banking the off of the first movie, but Fletch is the first Fletch is, is, is pretty good. Yeah. He's, he's, that's why like something like John Hamm, it can work, but I just don't know. I just don't really, I, <clears throat> I just don't really like him as an actor that much. I just don't, I, he hasn't done, He's done anything that's really wild, man. Yeah. This this movie is based on the second book called Confess Fletch. And this one goes as he's coming from home from his trip from Rome. And he finds that his Italian uh, fiance's father has been kidnapped and presumably murdered. And Fletch decides to investigate the case of a stolen art collection that his fiance is supposed to inherit. And when he arrives back in his apartment, he finds a dead body and things start to get complicated. Um, also that, that book is the one that introduced, um, Francis Xavier Flynn, which I guess is, uh, he gets his own spinoffs later. He's also kind of a Fletch type. He like can go toe to toe with Fletch, I guess. So it's like a, a, a foil for him. He's the and black so, Adam of, of the Fletch series. Yeah. 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 So I think they're probably going to cast him and try to start this whole of the Fletch universe. Cause I didn't know there was 11 books. Like yeah, no, it was one, of, one of them is called uh, Son of Fletch. So they obviously do this, this I guess, this, the continuation with his son. That always works out. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this, this, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know there was 11 books. But I, I, like you said, I don't know how I feel about John Hamm. He kind of seems bland and he's more of a mm-hmm. face than an actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it sucks to say to me, like, again, he seems like a cool dude, but I mean, like, yeah, he's more of a face than an actor. 100%. I, I can't think of another movie of his besides Mad Men, of course, but yeah, I never I really got into Mad Men. For the, like, for his credits to mention, I just put Mad Men, Baby Driver, and Keeping Up with the Joneses because I was like, what else is yeah. he, like, memorable in? I don't really remember. Oh, the town. Oh, really? That's probably one of his first movies, huh? The yeah, Am. he was Big he was movies. pretty good in 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 the. I don't town. remember that I actually. I don't remember him in it. I only remember is that Ben Affleck. Yeah, it's Ben Affleck and Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner's actually only. I only remember Ben and too. oh Blake Lively, right? Too. Is it Blake Lively? Uh, yes, yes, Blake Lively. I'm I only sure remember that. Oh yeah, he is going to be in that no sudden move film. Oh yeah, he is. Mm-hmm. Mm, is that bit... <laughs> see, I forget. I don't even know. Well, see, I uh... think I think he kind of works better in a way. In a way, he works better in ensembles, like something like Bridesmaids. He mm-hmm. was good to just like come in, pop in and out. But it's just him helming a movie. Like looking at his filmography, he's he does not helm movies because there's just something about him that no one, <laughs> no one, no one is interested. Yeah, anyway, I like Greg I mean, Matola though. I think Greg Matola can do something. I like do too. Today, st- make stuff fresh, but uh, we'll see. The writer is mediocre. As a TV guy, he's a story editor for Chuck. Wrote some Lethal Weapon episodes. He doesn't have too much, but it's based on a book, so it's it can't be that hard to write, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I think I think we're both on the same page. <laughs> let's wait. Let's wait until we see a trailer to really, yeah, really uh, judge. But right now. Uh, sorry john just gotta... sorry john his name is john too yeah it's like the most boring john too j-o-n there's not even an h no silent h ever being mean you're a good looking guy <laughs> you're awesome let's see we're getting another jake gyllenhaal movie and i found out i didn't fi- find i realized i think jake gyllenhaal is going to be is one of my all-time favorite actors. I I did say it was Steve Carell at one point, but he has gone downhill with his roles and I haven't seen him much. And I feel like Jake Gyllenhaal has consistently been pushing himself in many ways. He's kind of like a Christian Bale-esque type actor, I feel like. And I'm excited about anything that he does. So his next movie is called Ambulance. I'm a little deterred by the director, but it's going to be big. Michael Bay is directing his movie called Ambulance. (sighs) And it's based on a 2005 Danish film. 
and it follows two robbers who steal an ambulance after their heist goes a wire and taking they take a paramedic and its patient in critical condition hostage so i feel like it's going to be speed meets phone booth where they're just trying to get away it's all i quick. look i love jake gyllenhaal too but i can't i cannot support michael bay man. that's i really yeah, can't. that's why i was like ah yeah, Mom, he's I, just he's just the worst. Like, I really, really, really despise Michael Bay. Mm-hmm. I don't know why he keeps getting work, because like that last movie he did, Six Underground. With Ryan oh, that Reynolds. sucked. That was Awful. one of the hardest movies Awful. to watch. Awful. It's, Awful. it's an adrenaline good- rush and it doesn't slow down. It's pacing yeah. is horrible. It's so fast the whole time, but you feel the length of it. The it's editing like two hours is long. awful, too. Yeah. They, yeah, they try to put a moment in every second. Yeah, even as good movies like bad, like like I, I use good, uh, you know, loosely, uh, but Bad Boys and uh, uh, Thirteen Hours and Pain and Gain, mm-hmm. even those movies, like there's there's always something about it. It's always his fault. <laughs> it's always yeah, him. It is. It's always yes. a Michael Bay issue that it's the same way I feel about Zack Snyder, where it's just mm-hmm. like like they just they're 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 completely incapable of making a good movie. Mm-hmm. They're, they they just can't they can't they can't help themselves but to but to jerk themselves off and and not care about not care about us. He's the ultimate fuck you director. So yeah, I hope I hope this is one of the ones where he doesn't have a say in the script or anything, but he probably will because he's the oh, director. You know but, he will. Yeah, he but like producing it too. You know he will. Like you said, I hope like like with Zack Snyder, I hope that Michael Bay starts to get a uh, what is it? What is it? studio interference and i hope that starts to happen to him because yeah his his opinions and his voice are really arrogant in a way and it shows mm-hmm. like you said and it shows that it's usually from him but that that the writer is also related to chuck which is just like fletch he was the creator of chuck so and a bunch of other tv stuff like all these tv people are making or writing movies now they're just reaching out to them mm-hmm. which is very interesting but this cast is Jake Gyllenhaal, Yaiza Gonzalez, who is in Baby Driver as well with John Hamm, and uh, yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen II, who played um, what's his name? Uh, the, he's in the new Candyman movie and Barry Seal. Which one? Trial of the Chicago Seven. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that still. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's in that one too. That guy is going to be in this yeah. one too, and it's has a release date for February eighteenth, twenty twenty two. I feel like this is going to be. Uh, uh, what's it called um it's gonna compete i feel like with bullet train brad pitt's bullet train because it's a very similar concept of high speed chase mm. i feel like yeah but i'm man. personally more excited for bullet train yeah and i love jake gyllenhaal say. that's why i want it to go well for jake gyllenhaal yeah no i just don't know why <laughs> people keep working with michael bay because he doesn't even seem like 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 how we said for like Zack snyder and like adam sandler Seems like people work with them, even though they do bad movies. They work with them because they they're like genuine people. Yeah, they're characters. But Michael Michael Bay though, like I don't know why people work with that guy. Have you seen him do interviews and just like he just he seems like the fucking worst. Yeah, no, he's he's awful. I don't know why people keep working with him. It's it's so weird to me. I f- I thought once he did Painting Game that his career would probably go downhill because of how much he just like completely butchered that a true story and made fun of actual Real people victims like yeah. were murdered yeah. yeah and how he made fucking jokes over it. i can't believe that he got away with that shit and then to have him continue to to rape our eyes with transformers <laughs> <laughs> i finally can't got, i just they don't finally know. got rid of him yeah i just don't know ah man i don't i i yeah i i'm with you i i hope for the best for jake gyllenhaal <laughs> but also what the hell are you doing? Why are also, people still working on Jake Gyllenhaal? Why would you? I guess that. Yeah, yeah I, see I that. said the same thing when I saw Six Underground. I was like, "Why did Ryan Reynolds fucking do this?" Um, let's see. Uh, uh, this is kind of like a throwaway, kind of not really. But Elijah Wood is has a production company called Spectre Vision. Have you heard of that? He made. Um, they produce films yeah. like Cooties, uh, The Greasy Strangler, Mandy, Mandy Color Out of Space. Greasy. Oh, Greasy <laughs> Strangler. Oh, yeah. man. I didn't want to see that one because the trailer was so unnerving. I, I really don't want to remember that movie, Elijah. <laughs> it's it's still disgusting, with or without it. It's a disgusting <laughs> so make, film. 
they make some pretty wild movies, Spectre Vision. Um, but real quick, Elijah Wood said that he would like to remake Nightmare on Elm Street and Children of the Corn with that company, which I think would be pretty cool. I like mm. the Nightmare on Elm Street series. I don't I've never seen Children of the Corn, so Children of the Corn is good. I like Children of the Corn. Yeah, there's a new Children of the Corn coming out, which I heard was really, really weird to make, but oh no. It's like a, it's like a prequel or something. I don't know. Um well, Children of the Corn is pretty gnarly. I mean, Linda Hamilton, I'm pretty sure it's Linda Hamilton's first movie. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, Sarah Connor. But that movie's pretty, pretty damn, pretty damn gnarly, but it's funny, though. It's cheesy. That's that's one that that's one of those movies that definitely could use a, a remake, and I can see it going, going the extra mile. Nightmare mm-hmm. on Elm Street, don't remake. Just leave that shit alone. They, they kind of, yeah, they kind of mess with it. Well, I don't know. I they like messed it, it up like with the <laughs> other remake. They did. They, they messed it up with the oh, what's his name? Yeah, Jake, Jackie Earl Haley. That was yeah. A little weird. They tried once. They tried putting the uh, uh, Freddy Krueger was a child molester thing. Uh, yeah. I it it completely turned me off. Just yeah. have him be a child killer. Why is yeah. why do you have to have him be diddling too? He's already <laughs> diddling. <killing him>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> we found out Elijah's uh. trigger word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's the first time I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time. This is the first time anything like this has ever happened to me. <laughs> um, um, let's see. I I talked about the Toxic Avenger a couple weeks ago. Do you you never saw the 1984 movie, huh? Toxic, You'll probably no. recognize the cover. It's a cult classic considered. But Elijah Wood is in a is in the Toxic Avengers reboot or Toxic Avenger reboot, and um. It, I'm pretty excited about this because it was kind of one of those B movies where everyone's like, this is horribly good. And they made a bunch, they made how many sequels? They made three sequels after that and it ended with Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger 4. That's what direction it goes in. Tox, they call him Toxie. Um, but the Toxic Avenger is actually an action comedy that follows a struggling everyday man who is pushed into a vat of toxic waste and he is transformed into a mutant freak who must go... Um, from shunned outcast to underdog hero as he races to save his son, his family, and community from the forces of greed and corruption. So it's all about them fighting a big, big company. But uh, Peter Dinklage, I guess, is uh, attached to be the Toxic Avenger. Jacob Tremblay is going to play his son. Elijah Woods going to play somebody. <laughs> and Kevin Bacon is the big bad. So I was like, oh, wow, this cast was coming together. And I feel like this movie could be really cool because the director yes. is the guy who directed I Don't Feel at Home in This World. And oh, Mac and Blair. Yeah. And oh, he directed yes. The pilot to Room 104. So I'm like, this is going to be a pretty sweet um, reboot because yes. Toxic Avenger is pretty gritty and pretty gross, actually, because of just it's just a B movie that they did a lot of had a lot of fun with. Uh huh. So Dude, I'm Mac excited and for Blair. that project. Mac and Blair is fantastic every one of his movies are so he's only got a handful good. right but they yes but he's, he, he's, uh, he's doing well yeah but he's also um the guy that directed green room uh, oh, those okay. two those two went to college with each other so they 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 have mm. done all their movies with each other so he was in blue he was the start in blue ruin which is the guy that did green room's first film which is really oh, really good that. yeah uh he was in green room um he directed I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. He wrote this movie called Small Crimes, which is a really good uh, Netflix He's pretty film. hardcore. Wow. Yeah, Hold the Dark, which is, uh, I never I never finished Hold the Dark, not for any bad reasons. It's just, it, it, it was, it's, it's fucking, it's, it's gritty. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude, oh my God. Just to just hear, I, I just love that guy so much. And he is, I'm glad he's, that he, that last guy, the last director, you're just laughing at the director. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that That's entire cool. cast too is great too. Yeah, and yeah. like I was just looking at uh, a poster the for original? the Toxic Adventure, yeah. uh, talk Toxic Adventure. And yeah. yes, this looks this looks so great. It's and I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Man, I think that is, movie is so underrated. Is Peter Dinklage in that one? No. Um it's uh, you're thinking of I care a lot. I think there's a yeah, I I think there's another one where it's kind of like oh, is that Elijah Wood? I don't feel at home in this world. Yeah, Elijah Wood is okay. A, that's what I thought. Yeah, that was, I was okay. I'm, dude, I, I don't feel it. at home. I, in I saw this that world. one once. 
yeah I, that was the that was the one movie that made me be like okay netflix yeah okay let's see we got two more stories justin before okay. we call it a day okay i'm gonna give you two creators and you tell me which one we should go with next noah bombach or zoe kravitz you've probably heard about the zoe kravitz one it's pretty pretty popular right now maybe um... not <laughs> Think I'm hard about it. Go. We're going to talk about both. <laughs> I'm going to go with Noah Baumbach. All right. So we're getting Noah, another Noah Baumbach movie. He has a new Netflix deal, and well, his Netflix deal is continuing. Um, Noah Baumbach is known for Francis Ha, Marriage Story, um, Madagascar 3. He wrote. <laughs> and uh, let's see. the most. I think that's Most Wanted. Um, he's also <laughs> doing the new Barbie movie with uh, Greta Gerwig, which is interesting. They're co-writing it together. But this is his first adaptation. He's ad- adapting a book um, by Don DeLillo. It's uh, called White Noise. Um, Don DeLillo also wrote a book called Cosmo- Cosmopolis, which with uh, Robert Pattinson. Have you seen that? Or oh, that? oh yeah, entirely yeah. Entirely yeah. in, a, in a, a limo or something across the, going across town. I never I saw haven't it, seen it, but, but it's yeah, on Netflix sure and stuff. It. And, and it stars Robert Pattinson. <laughs> so it's the same author as that. Um, but this one sounds interesting. Uh, it, uh, it's a satirical, uh, book that follows Jack, a professor who made a name for himself by teaching Hitler studies at a liberal arts college in middle America. (laughs) This fourth wife, Babette and their kids, they attempt to navigate the, uh, usual rocky passages of family life. And that's all put to the test when an airborne toxic event from a chemical spill from a rally car a rail car disrupts their existence and forces them to face the threat of uh, dying together. And the whole book is about morality and the fear of death. And it like, in, I like try not to read too much about it because it started to spoil some stuff because I guess there's like a drug that is involved in this movie. That's like a prescription drug that makes people not afraid to die or something. And like the wife, I guess, guess gets addicted to it or something. And so it sounds really bizarre. It's a satire. So, and it's yeah. it's in based on how we know how marriage story went, it's gonna be pretty rocky for the family. Um it the the cast is Adam Driver, Reunion, Greta Gerwig, and Jody Turner Smith, who um I knew from Queen and Slim. Um it sounds pretty weird. Yeah. And it's the first yeah. story that he has that didn't write originally, like he's adapting it, which is interesting. I yeah no that's very weird I don't know how I feel about that mm-hmm. that sounds, sounds that sounds like, like a be, lot yeah it sounds like it could be like I like sent you this oh yeah I sent you this trailer called how it ends and it's about a meteor coming and it's like just a big ensemble cast with like Fred Armisen and like a lot of Charlie Day's in there there's like a lot of people in this movie dude yeah no that that girl that girl's awesome she she wrote this movie called Band-Aid which is great mm. oh Her I've heard of that and so good I love but, it um yeah. But this movie, uh, the Noah Baumbach, um, I, I like that he's going a little ambitious. He's going something different. Yeah. But that sounds like a fucking mess. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be. It sounds messy. I, I feel like it's going to be one of those ones. Like, I always feel this way about end of the world movies or like movies about that, where it's just like, I'm going to have a bad taste in my mouth if it doesn't end happy. And like, it's like usually how those movies go. And I feel like this is not going to end well for them. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> I like uh I do like that cast. Yeah. I find it very interesting that he is doing this and the Barbie movie. It <laughs> seems like he is like because he's done so many movies now. People mm. haven't seen like a lot of his movies, which is a shame because he's mm. he's done great, great movies. And he's a director that's only gotten better by each each movie like his first movie kicking and screaming isn't isn't the best i couldn't get through that honestly i tried to watch that one like post knowing who he was like later on it was one of his Mm -hmm. later movies i saw and i was like i can't finish this because it's kind of like what he was trying to do with the merowitz stories of like everyone talking at the same time kind of thing but they it just didn't Mm -hmm. work for me with that and and like the like i think he still he still didn't know what he was doing yeah, like he didn't know how to do that yet. But like the like you like the Meyerowitz stories, right? 
Mm-mm. new and selected i like what how he directs the I dialogue his, of that i think that is perfect movie yeah i, I yeah. like how he directs no, that's the his that's that. his perfect movie right there yeah yeah um yeah no francis haw is fantastic i think francis haw is when he really started finding his footing that's my and favorite movie while we're young is great i could i watch francis haw like twice a year yeah it's it's so good it, it gives me it yeah. gives me motivation to to just keep going <laughs> my buddy uh had a huge uh he had a huge problem with greta gerwig for a long time he like just did not like her he thought that she couldn't act and i showed him francis haw and he was like oh damn never mind well and she's not I acting him, in that that's her that's who she uh, yeah, is actually. yeah <laughs> well and uh i also showed him a greenberg movie with ben stiller oh yeah. yeah which is a stressful movie it's not a good movie because it's just so his character is so unbearable but she's mm-hmm. really good in it yeah and uh uh and Mistress America, she's great in too. Um, you know, she's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I really like Noah Bombach, so I'll always be there for him. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be there for him holding his hand uh, yeah. while he makes weird, weird, impulsive decisions like Barbie and white noise. Netflix, Netflix is Noah Bombach's new home. He said, like, he's like, I'm not going to mm-hmm. leave. Like, he's like, I finally found a family that's going to let me create stuff. So that's good cool. for him. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you, we're given a deal by all like all the uh, streaming services to be like create content for us. Mm-hmm. Which streaming service would you choose? Hulu. Hulu. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I would go with Hulu because they have a the deal with uh, this production company called American high. Mm. They did a uh, big time adolescence. They recently did a movie called plan B. Oh yeah. Uh, then they're, that they're with... fantastic. Oh yeah. I heard. Yeah. Mark Duplass was just talking about plan B. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah i i, I like I, and i like their tv shows a lot i like i like i think that they like fucking palm springs too is mm-hmm. great like they're just that's a good one yeah yeah who i feel who, i feel like i wouldn't want right to do now. netflix though because netflix there's a lot of gets a lot of things get drowned out in netflix there's exactly. so much there's just almost exactly. too much yeah it's it, it is it's it's way too much Hulu knows how to uh netflix just kind of just throws everything out there yeah. and hopes that you'll find it someday Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Hulu, Hulu knows how to pace themselves. They're just like, all right, we're here's here's this movie, here's mm-hmm. here's this here's this TV show. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like they 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 know how to really be, and their stories that they tell, like woke, is great. Uh, oh yeah, you know, it's who who is fantastic. That's that would be I my, would probably would be my main go with, go-to. I'd probably go with Amazon. Honestly, I Amazon I'd be like, a strong contender. I like I like the direction they're going with a lot of their stuff, especially because like. Yeah, I like Fleabag a lot, and that was one of the things where I was like, "That, I, that, that's a good level." Have you seen that yet? That TV show? Uh, I I watched a little bit of it. You and I talked about it before, where I was I was very nervous when I watched the pilot because I was like, "Oh shit, dude, this this is like scumbag." But uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. that's <laughs> right. Yeah, I went, yeah, yeah. they go. I, I got I got very 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 nervous because <laughs> that was one of those. Amazon used to do this thing where they would have uh, pilot seasons. You remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 I missed when they did that. There were a lot of shows that they released pilots for that were really good. And mm-hmm. Fleabag was one of them. And I watched that pilot and I was like, motherfucker. And mm-hmm. the show came out and I watched more of it. And I was like, thank God. dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, the guy that I... directed uh, the first episode of Fleabag, that pilot episode, also directed Action Point with Giant Oxville. What? Wow. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, have Interesting. that. Have that sink in. Have that sink in. Uh, that's why wow. there's weird emotional moments with stunts. Yeah, that. that yeah, that's true. Wow. That. Wow. Okay, I'm learning so much today. <laughs> <laughs> so our last story, uh, kind of. We can have a. If we have time, I want to mention this one bullet point that I have. Um, Zoe Kravitz is making her directorial debut, which is going to be very cool. She is, uh, she's, if you don't know, she's going to be our new Catwoman in the Robert Pattinson Batman. But she, her first film mm-hmm. that she's directing, she also wrote, it's called, uh, it's a thriller called Pussy Island. Have you heard of this? No, I think I would remember that. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's been going around. It's been going That's around a... the, this past week. Pussy Island. Yes. So it follows Frida, a young, clever Los Angeles cocktail waitress who has her eyes on, uh, set on a prize a philanthropist and tech mogul slater king and when she skillfully maneuvers her way into king's inner circle and ultimately 
an intimate gathering on his private island, she is ready for a journey of a lifetime. Despite the epic setting, beautiful people, ever-flowing champagne, and late-night dance parties, Frida can sense that there's more to this island that meets the eye, something mm. she can't quite put her finger on, something terrifying. Mm. Yep. I feel like a lot of people are doing this private island like secrecy movies, like with the menu. And I think people are just are being uh, inspired F-C- by true F-C- life stories. F-C- yeah. True life, F-C- true life stories. Um, let's see. Uh, it seems honestly, they're, they're just giving fuel to the people that really think that, uh, yes. that Hollywood was all in. those conspiracy theories. Yeah. They're, they're really, like, no, they're these really are just movies. Driving. See? Yeah, yeah, they're really driving home. They're like that, that's the only reason why it's the same thing with like COVID movies. Yeah. Uh, where I'm just like, just stop because you're just making people more angry. Like I don't I don't care. Like make make whatever, but I'm like, God damn, yeah. dude, you're making you're just you're just adding Fueling fuel the to the fire. Pump. Yeah. Yeah. But other but that does sound interesting though. Yeah. <laughs> and it does, I do right? love I love Zoe Kravitz. I think that she is I'm interested to see how awesome. what what choices she's gonna make about everything because she's mm-hmm. the director she said that um this is a quote that she said with deadline she said the title means a lot of things and i started writing this story in 2017 as a woman in general and a woman in this industry i've experienced some pretty wild behavior from the opposite sex and the title was kind of a joke at first this place where people would go bring women party and hang out and the story evolved into something else but the title wound up having multiple meanings and it alludes to this time and place we claim to not be in anymore in terms of sexual politics. People are evolving and changing and there's still a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths from past behavior. It's a nod to that, but it's also playful and a really, uh, it's a really playful film in a lot of ways. I like the way the title leads with that and has some heavy meaning beneath it. She said that she wrote the lead role for herself as a dream role that she would want to play, but she's going to cast someone else so that she can focus on directing, which is, I think, a good choice. Um, But she wrote the script with Channing Tatum in mind. So she came, she invited him to be a producer and help develop the script to give that perspective. Nice. And this is, this is what she said when she cast Channing Tatum. She said, Channing was my first choice. And the one I thought of when I wrote this character Slater, the character's name is Slater King. I just knew from Magic Mike and his live shows, I got this sense that he's a true feminist and wanted to collaborate. And I wanted to collaborate with someone who was clearly interested in exploring the subject matter. And this is what uh, Channing Tatum said about the movie. He said, Slater is a wild character, an extremely committed version, psychotic possibly, but an extreme version of myself. I'm very interested to see what humans are capable of physically, mentally, spiritually, energetically, all of it. He wants to know what people are capable of, what they want and what they are capable of when they want something and uh, how far you are willing to go to push yourself to get that thing that you want. For me, that supersedes gender, race or religion. And that's wildly fascinating to me. So I like how on board and and everyone like those two are and that they are very passionate about what they're going to be telling. So this seems like a very I like the way this is starting off already. Yeah, no, I, I that that all sounds awesome. It sounds very collaborative, which is yeah. awesome. I agree. They they really respect that perspective of getting that. I feel like. Uh, yeah, no, Zoe Kravitz is. I I think that she's a massive massive talent. Interesting fun fact. Zoe Kravitz has already played Catwoman. On an animated show. She played Catwoman in the Lego Batman movie. Oh, wow. Wow. That's interesting. We're going to get a she crossover. Also, <laughs> also, she played Mary Jane in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which She's is very interesting because wasn't Mary Jane white? And in... Yeah. Her voice isn't, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to let that one go. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say any more just in case, just in case, <laughs> even yeah. though that raises some, that raises some eyebrows. Um, yeah. I wonder what, how, I wonder how she's going to balance it. I don't, I, this is going to be a good movie, I think. And I wonder what yeah. the cast is going to be. Cause I feel like everyone's going to want to be like Zoe Kravitz's debut. I want to be a part of that. I think a lot of people yeah. are going to be doing that. 
Um, really quick, kind of like a transition in a way, because I just read this before we start recording, mm-hmm. and it has something to do with the with Zoe Kravitz as well, because she's in it. Did you hear about the shit that's continuing to go on with Batman, with Matt yes. Reeves and Robert Pattinson? Yeah, and I want to acknowledge Batman in general really too, but yeah, it's just it just keeps getting brought up, and I like I keep thinking to myself like these have to be bullshit stories because mm-hmm. Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson, they've been, they've been in the industry for so long yeah. that, you know, people that would know. It seems like they would be more professional than what the, what this, what the, uh, the reports are being, but yeah. my God, dude, like now it, it has to be acknowledged because this last one, like, I guess Robert Pattinson is preparing to quit. If quote unquote, uh, Matt Reeves does not apologize. And if it's not, specifying what you should apologize for Mm -hmm. um it's weird i think i'm kind of like i'm i'm starting to i'm getting vibes i'm getting strong vibes that the batman of robert pattinson is not ever going to come out (laughs) i think it is i think for some reason i i I think i think it's going to be one of those movies that's just going to be shelved and we're always going to wonder what the hell happened to it Mm -hmm. or it's going to be released and it's going to be just a weird jumble mess uh, I don't um, but, believe a lot of this stuff. I think because um, if you look at other news too, like Warner Brothers just gave Robert Pattinson a huge deal to first look deal of the stuff he's going to make. So it's like if they gave him that deal, Warner Brothers, how is that relationship bad? Because everyone's saying the studio, Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson are all in different places. So they're like, they're just not, they can't work together. And there's also rumors that, there's some really ridiculous. Have you heard the rumors that Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz kept hooking up on set and hooking up in the what's it called in the Batmobile offshoot and like Zoe Kravitz got pregnant and that's why she got divorced from her oh, husband. Wow. Have you heard that? that have you heard that landish. stuff? No, that, no that's that all crazy. the same. That's it's crazy. all in the same realm that I've heard. It's like Matt Reeves doesn't that's like crazy. I, But I think what you're referring to, I've heard that side. I think what you're referring to then is. Uh, like Robert Pattinson said, he's not going to work out. He said he's not going to take, like he's not taking it as uh. serious as Matt Reeves wanted, and and it's like they can't just see eye to eye on the project on the level of where it is. Mm-hmm. And I've also heard that Warner Brothers doesn't like how mentally, how many mental problems Bruce Wayne has. I did that, hear about that, and it's like when when that it's too it's too much for him, uh, for the for the Bruce Wayne character to deal with. Instead of Batman, they're focusing too much on on Bruce Wayne's mental problems mm-hmm. rather than Batman. So there's a lot, of, yeah. There's a lot of stories about this movie. I think that downhill. this, I think that this movie, if it does get released, like for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I just have a strong, weird feeling that they're just probably just gonna be like, you know what, fuck it, we're just not even gonna release this. I don't. I don't know why. I don't know why. Insane. I don't, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know why. But it's just it's just strongly it's a strong feeling that I have. Yeah. But um, I feel like if this movie does come out, we're not going to get another Batman movie for a long time. I think I think Warner Bros is finally just probably not. Like, yeah, not mainstream. We're probably going to get like HBO streaming shows and stuff. There's yeah. some smaller projects where we're not going to put so much. Movies. Yeah, we're not going to put so much money into the, at Batman anymore. <laughs> it sucks because the first trailer that came out, it looks fucking great. It looks yeah, really that, good. That was less than 25% of their f- yeah, production exactly. too. So they're like, we don't really have anything. So Yeah. And time. probably most of the shit on that tra- in that trailer is probably not even going to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <they're just> like, <laughs> they already saw that. We don't need to. Yeah. We can't use that now. Yeah. yeah I, I could see something like that. But it's so weird. Like I've never like, I mean, like, of course, like with the Snyder thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, that was all bizarre. But this is this is like this is crazy. Like I can't, yeah. I don't really blame anybody like Matt Reeves or Robert Pattinson. I don't blame anyone. If they were yeah. just like, we're not going to do this again. This is just like a one and done thing. This is yeah. fucking ridiculous. I don't, yeah. I really don't think that Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves are, are fighting like this. And especially don't believe that Zoe Kravitz and Pattinson are <laughs> hooking up in the Batmobile. I, I, that's what I heard. I, like people are genuinely like, "This is happening," and I'm like, "Wow, people are really believe it." But I think, I think it's a lot of Snyder fans. Yeah, we still the weird. Snyderverse trying to sabotage and be like, mm-hmm. "Give it back." That's uh, like that's my deepest conspiracy yes. theory. Because like, what's it called? What do they call that? Review bombing. Like they like immediately negatively review movies so that they drop because of personal reasons. 
Uh, I I term, but I like that. I I like review bombing. Yeah, they they like. Yeah, uh, just... I mean, like I don't like doing that. <laughs> Let me, let I like review it. bombing. I like quote, quote of the episode. I like review bombing. Welcome to the episode. <laughs> I like mm. the term. I don't. I don't do it. I don't. I, it's not. It's not. Oh man, dude, I do that every Tuesday. Um, yeah. Uh, I yeah. Right. No, he's got. He's got some. He's, he's got ready. Some boss. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. I. I. Yeah. I. I agree with you though. I think that it is a bunch of fanboys, and maybe like I think Warner Bros is like super. Uh, I think that they're conflicting too. They're probably mm-hmm. the same boat being like, dude, we just, why, why do really, we, why do we do this when, and then we just release the Snyder cut? What are we doing to ourselves? Let's just, let's just kind of just bury this, this yeah. uh, Pattinson one and let's bring back the Snyder cut. Cause clearly that's what everybody wants. We're still doing the Shazam movies. We're doing like, like, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, I want to throw in one more story, Justin, just because for, for shit, you and better. Giggles. For shits and giggles, um, <clears throat> Paulie Shore is uh, he posted on. Wait Instagram. a second! <laughs> Wait a second! Are you sure you want to end with this? Are you Pauly sure this Shore. is the one? This is more of a joke story because there's nothing that's going to come out of this. But <laughs> Paulie Shore took to Instagram, and he was uh, he was a uh, celebrating God, Encino Man too. Yeah, is <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh this my god. This is funny god. because I didn't even I haven't heard I haven't heard about this. I have not heard about this. I that was a, that was just a wild guess. My next guess was son-in-law too. Uh, so okay, keep going. I'm he sorry. celebrated oh 29 god. years of Encino Man and I'm like, "Why didn't you just wait 1 year? 30 years makes more sense." 29 That's like that's stupid. 29 years ago. Encino Man was came out in theaters, which I think is one of my favorite movies, honestly, because I love that movie. I loved that movie so much because I loved Brendan Fraser at the time. But he took to Instagram and posted a picture of him and Brendan Fraser. And he was basically like, hey, everyone hit up Disney Plus and then me and Brendan and Sean can do a sequel. And he's just like, that's one of those things where I'm just like, you're asking people you're just asking that now for help for this. Let's get it going, guys. Let's get it going. I mean, of all the projects, I feel upset that he had he just killed Encino Man 2 for me. And I like that movie. And I I don't know how a sequel would work, but I I just now I'm going to be like, (laughs) oh, because he brought it back up. He should have let it rest. That would not work. His revival idea is so funny to me that he's like, Instagram, let's hit up Disney Plus and make another one. It's like, I feel like that's not okay anymore Polly Shore you're doing some really weird things he's even in that movie that I sent you called how it ends he yes. randomly shows up I was very shocked I, I was very so shocked, shocked by all there. the people in there I was like wow what the hell yeah um but dude I see no man too <laughs> dude Polly Shore man he's such mm-hmm. a trip he is such a trip you know he's a Vegas native now oh yeah oh yeah, yeah he's he's Have you he's seen- the I like how you went super Minnesota with that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, he lives in Vegas with you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He lives up the street. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I I didn't realize how hardcore Vegas he was. Like he's becoming, he's like trying, attempting to be an even trashier version of Wayne Newton. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, I hope he says Wayne Newton. <laughs> <laughs> Have you he's seen gonna... his? He made a pandemic YouTube series in, in Hawaii. Sure. Yeah, Polly have Shore. you seen it? I saw. I I think I I saw, I saw a little bit of something that he did, and it's I so had to bizarre. Turn it off. It's so bizarre. It's like he has his like, I don't know, I don't know who he's making it with, but it's just not good. Dude, there, he did this thing. one. He did this short film. This is how I found out he was a Vegas native, and that he was like using. He was like hardcore promoting Vegas nonstop. I don't know what deal he has with Vegas, but <laughs> he's, he's doing something. But he's uh, something. He did this short film. You should look this up because it's fucking weird. I need to find out what, what it was called. He did this short film where he plays sadistic killer who's obsessed with laughing gas and he kidnaps this prostitute. Oh, Sin City Psycho. Yes. Dude, watch that and try your hardest. Try your hardest, Elijah, not to laugh. He wrote and directed it. Because it's supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be dead, 
wrote, directed, starred. I'm pretty sure he was a cinematographer. He probably did the music. He got, he got all the props. <laughs> he he Make did everything. everything. And dude, it is it's yeah. Well, no, you could tell that there was no makeup to be done. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is it's it's baffling. It's a baffling film. And I thought it was a joke at first when I was watching it. I was like, there's no way he's taking this seriously. There's no way. Like, this is so unbelievably bad. The acting is so over the top. The dialogue is ridiculous. And then I looked at the comments on it because it's on his YouTube. I look at the comments and dude, homeboy is commenting on his own video explaining the experience of making the short film. And now he wants to make it into a feature length film and that how he wants the opportunity to act like this more. And people are responding to him and he's like, he's like responding to every single comment. And I was like, dude, this is not doing anything else, but I couldn't, I spent, I spent like fucking like three hours just, just scrolling through these comments, looking at like why he did this. Like, why did you do this? Dude, he also did this documentary. Um, dude, we're now just gonna start talking about Polly Shore. He also did this. <laughs> I knew it was a, did this. That's your trigger word. <laughs> yeah, don't say Polly to me. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Leaning Tower at Chisa. No, uh, uh, he he did this documentary that he directed for some reason called um, uh, Polly Shore Stands Alone, mm-hmm. and it's literally just him walking around, being in, like interviewing other comedians. And then he turns the table to him and like he interviews like successful people and he turns the tables to him. And he's just like, I'm sad. Nobody wants to hire me. I want to kill myself. <laughs> and I lost my, I lost my mom. I lost yeah. everything. No one wants to be with me anymore. No yeah. one wants to hire me. He talks about son of law as his favorite movie. Like he just, and it's so, it's so ridiculous. Like it's so sad. Like I feel for the guy because his mom, yeah, his mom started everything for comedians yeah the, uh, on the the what oh hold on i have a, a thing that I yeah, can mimi show. shore there's this she started the comedy store in la mm-hmm. she was the head person of that you know she she paved the way and that's the only reason that's why it's so sad and you can totally tell it's catching up to him his his psyche and his his, his popularity the mm-hmm. only reason why it happened is because he had mommy's money he had he had the 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 mother of all comedy too. Yeah. Um, and yeah. For those who so don't know, like, the comedy yeah. store is that that super iconic uh, mm-hmm. comedy and and uh, comedy. What is it? What comedy? It's a venue. Venue. That's the word. Yeah. In in Hollywood, Mitzi. that Mitzi's her name. That Mitzi everybody Shore. like had like if they if they wanted to make it, they really needed wanted to be in that venue. Like that's the one that you see all the signatures outside from all the really famous ones that also yeah. like made their huge headline it was in you had story. to get through mitzi because mitzi shore owned mm-hmm. every comedian yeah. she was the most powerful woman in in not just hollywood or comedy she was most pop like most she was so you if you did not get through mitzi like she this 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 woman found Whoopi goldberg Robin Williams, Gary Shandling, Jay Leno, mm-hmm. David Schwimmer, or David, not David Schwimmer, <laughs> <laughs> David Letterman, <laughs> David Schwimmer, not even a comedian. She just, she just kind of <laughs> saw him. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but also Jim Carrey, Mark Maron, mm-hmm. Andrew Dice Clay, Bobcat Goldthwait, Bill Burr. Like, yeah. like, dude, she killed it. And she and was like the Lauren Michaels of SNL for stand up comedy yeah. in Hollywood. She was like that head. Like, everyone's like, Everyone mm-hmm. want, like wanted to sit down and have dinner with her. Yeah, there's this uh, there's this one uh, show on Showtime called "I'm Dying Up Here." Yeah, um, which is loosely based off of off of the her, and, and uh, yeah, and Melissa Leo plays a character that's loosely based off of her. Oh, cool! And that's produced by Jim a, Carrey, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a bummer of a show, though. It like they really, really think, fucked it. That's why yeah. I wrote my own adaptation on because there's this thing that happened. Now I'm just kind of pitching, pitching <laughs> ideas here. <laughs> no, but uh, there's this real thing that happened with uh, with Mitzi uh, when she had the comedy store. She would have uh, these were like really popular comedians too, David Letterman and all of them. They realized that they were not getting paid. Like, like they're they're not getting paid for 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 their time on stage, and there are mm-hmm. other places that they could have gotten paid. But if they went to those other places, Mitzi 
would uh, completely shut them out. She wouldn't let them like they would lock the doors on them. Like, like if you were two minutes late for a test, she would lock the doors on you. And so they everybody started this huge strike in 1979 and they picketed and it became this huge thing that that almost killed uh, the comedy store. Mm. And uh, it's really interesting. I would I would I would I would would definitely dive into that sometime yeah. for a project i'd be interested to hear more about that that's cool it's 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 pretty it's pretty you said 70s ish 70s it was 1979 when it happened oh wow okay so yeah. okay and and to think about like the only reason why i wanted to do a movie on it is because it's not just like these like little like nobody comics it was like jim carrey david letterman jay leno yeah it's like and they're all like in their like early 30s to late 20s to early 20s like Bill Burr, like you think about being in that, like <laughs> at that strike, seeing them hold like picket fences or picket signs, picket fences, picket signs. <laughs> and, uh, and they think, is this and, a uh, joke? No, but they're, yeah, they're, they're yeah, standing no, for something. They're standing up for comedy. Yeah, they're standing up for the for their right to get paid for doing stand up. Wow, uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, Pauly Shore is pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. <laughs> you guys, I encourage you to watch more stuff on Pauly Shore because it's so, he, he's, he's such a bizarre human being, but I feel for him because I mean, like yeah. he, he grew up in such an odd environment where he like, he grew up in the comedy store. He grew up with like just cocaine and hookers yeah. all around him and people yeah. saying the most outlandish shit. And, and, you know, like, I can't imagine, I really can't imagine. And then being famous by the time like you're not even 18 yet, being MTV's first uh, uh, face uh, for for music videos and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I can't imagine. But like clearly, it's fucked him up. Now he's doing music he like guest house. Does he have like a book or anything about him? I guarantee he has a book. If he doesn't have a book, then there's we need to write something for him. Yeah, we need to we need to be his ghostwriters and just be like, let's write, let's let us write your life. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that has. I think that's our episode. Um, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just I'm getting started. We're, we're going to go through every one of Polly Shore's movies. I mean, he's like, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, he does not have a book, which, yeah, is, didn't think which so. is a damn. I feel damn, like his life might shame. be like you, like the way you put it is like, yeah, he grew up in that world. Of, and it's like kind of, yeah, I think that would be a very, I want to know what happened to Polly Shore in his life. <laughs> Well, I, mean, he's, I, would, he's, uh, I guess he's just, on the street just telling everyone about it. <laughs> yeah. No, check out that, Write docu- a book. that documentary. <laughs> Yeah, the documentary uh, uh Pauly Shore stands alone and there's an, um he did uh, a one before I think that's like a spiritual sequel to his other one called Pauly Shore is Dead. Yeah, Pauly Shore is Dead is another crazy one. It's not a documentary though. It's just about him um, fictionalized version of him. Yeah, he of? he uh Oh, I thought uh, that was actually I thought it was him. I thought uh, it was he that type. it's a fictionalized version of him and he finds out that if he fakes his death in the movie Sam Kinison comes down and tells him that he needs to fake his death. That's the only reason. That's the only way people are going to respect him again. Yeah. He fakes his death. And, uh, and it's just another one of those movies where it's just like, fuck dude, you're just, I understand. Like, yeah. Like to the point where like, you're worried about him. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it becomes, it's, yeah. it's like, you're actually like genuinely concerned for Pauly Shore. <laughs> All right. Let's end this. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, thanks for the, listening to this episode of history of popcorn if you made it this far you might as well subscribe and follow our show on spotify or apple or whatever you listen to podcasts or on youtube if you're there hit the bell if you're on youtube hit that um, bell. yeah thank you guys for coming in to another episode of history of popcorn we are glad that you are interested in movies like we are let us know what you guys are watching or what we should watch um and we will see you guys next week justin what would you like to say to our lovely listeners um everybody check out Polly Shore Stands Alone. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening again. We means a lot to us. Oh yeah. Um check us out next week with more news. Bye guys. Bye-bye. I was just going to, my mom has been calling me and my buddy Ty, so I'm just going to step out really quick and smoke a cigarette. Your mom's been calling you Ty? Just kidding.
<laughs> something's going mom, on over here. So, <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> oh no, my, name's my mom's not getting high. worse. <laughs> my mom's getting worse over here. Uh, <laughs> that's funny.